This is the Bible Ranger. We're going to be talking about the Maseroth, Zodiac, Astrology, Horoscope, and basically is the Gospel in the Stars, episode 23. And before we start, just want to remind you to please subscribe. All right, warning. Don't get sidetracked with this. Even though we're going to be talking about the subject here, um, I want you to know that it's the possibility that the gospel was in the stars at one point. I'm not trying to get anybody to study um, horoscopes and zodiac signs. That's not where this is going, okay? So today we have the written word. So there's, it's a lot more clear than interpreting the stars through thousands of years and multiple cultures and myths way back. However, it shows how God is so awesome and so multilayered that he leaves messages with us. For example, um, and we're just talking about the Bible, the written Bible that we have. Um, it's backed up through history. We can prove it. We can prove it through archaeology and we can prove it through prophecy or prophetically. Also, there's another layer here of depthness of the Bible where it's Bible codes. And one we'll talk about that in the future. But think about this, how awesome God is. The Bible has to make sense as you read it. And at the same time, he incorporates Bible codes in there just to supercharge the authenticity of it. All right, terms. The difference between astronomy and astrology. Astronomy, the study of stars, space, and the uni universe as a whole. Astrology, the study of stars and the supposed influence on humans. While astronomy is a science, astrolo astrology is a pseudoscience. Now, more on the specifics, okay? The main zodiacs, or what they call Maserath, or horoscopes, for a better lack of a term, um, they're called houses, and they're, they're in 12 parts, those 12 parts of the zodiacs, okay? Now, they all run in a certain pattern. If you notice, this is our solar system up here, and you notice this circle that all the planets go to, that circle there is called the ecliptic, right there. And everything goes around the ecliptic. All the planets, the moon, the, the, the sun, all the zodiacs, and something called the deacons. Okay, the deacons are stars on the zodiac above it and below it. And those give the zodiacs more of a full story. Now, the Maserath, basically, it's like saying zodiac. Okay, in Hebrew, it means zodiac. But in other places, they said it means the garland of crowns. All right, this might be important. There seems to be a link between the 12 tribes and the zodiacs of Maserath. Um, it seems like every tribe has a sign. And it's interesting that I find that they also call the signs houses. And I'll, do be, I'll be doing a, a future video on this as soon as I find out some more information. However, there seems to be also a connection between the Jewish feast festivals and these signs. But we'll talk about it more in the future. All right, now when it comes to the zodiacs, almost everybody in the world, they use the same ones. It's pretty universal, except for a couple of countries and one of them being China. China, for some reason, they have, I don't know why it's so different, but they have like the year of the dog, the year of the rat, the year of the pig. They're just totally different. Now, some scholars believe, and I tend to believe this because I believe there's enough in there to give some credibility, but in the Bible in Genesis 1.14, it says that the stars were made for signs and for seasons, for days and for years. So not only for the calendar, but also for for later on, those seasons will be like um, Jewish feast. And that God taught Adam, and Adam taught his descendants until they got to Noah. Noah, of course, showed his sons, and eventually got down to um, Abraham. Until you get to the place where, after the flood, you get to the part where you get to Nimrod and Semiramis, which corrupted all of it and made it more into a horoscope. And they changed the definitions, and I, unfortunately, it, it has stuck through all these years. And it's gotten lost until maybe until now, I don't know. But it's pretty, pretty much different. And that's in episode three. So just go way back and you can get a little bit more viewing on it. All right, interpreting the, the signs. Let's start with Virgo. First, we need to know the names of the stars, okay, um, by the order of their brightness. And normally, the best 
interpretation is when you know the Hebrew names, but sometimes they're not all clear, so they use some Arabic names, because in um, the Arabians, they were adept um, in knowing the names of these stars too. So they also have good records on that. Um, and then when you put all the names together in that particular order, it gives you a picture. And with that picture, it usually reminds you of, of, the, whole, of the whole story. So let's start with Virgo, but we also, not, not only are we using the sign of Virgo, but we're going to use their deacons, which is the ones above, constellation above it, and constellation below it. Virgo meaning virgin, and when, you, when you're looking at the actual stars, one of them will say that the ear of corn, the ear of corn right there, and you'll notice that she has that in her left hand, and there's verses in the Bible where Christ talks about, you know, the seed doesn't die, basically it won't sprout life. Another part here, it's a branch that she has, and there are, in Hebrew, there are 20 definitions for the word branch. However, in Zechariah 3.8, um, there's a word for, for branch, um, simek. And this word for branch basically is only for Jesus, only for the Messiah. And basically it just says, I will bring a servant of the branch. That's basically what it says. All right, continuing Virgo. All right, now what, what you're going to see here are bullet points of the names of the stars that we were talking about. The sign itself. Um, and then the, the deacons with it. So the seed of a woman, desires of nations, the man of double nature, and the exalted shepherd and harvester. Now you notice this is talking about a virgin, but yet it talks about the seed of a woman. That itself is a little bit unusual because when you talk about a virgin, there's no seed there, okay? And obviously this is a representation of Mary when she had Jesus and and the, the virgin birth. Now, if you were to do this as a message, as one little sentence, you would see that it's basically saying that this speaks of a virgin birth of the Almighty God. And basically in Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. All right, great. Now the next one is Libra. In Libra, the bullet points are the price to be paid, the cross to be endured, the victim slain, the crown purchased, and if you were to do, if you were to do a message on this, a short verse, it would basically say a sentence. It would say the um, the Lord Jesus' blood sacrifice of His own self to redeem sinful men, and this is a whole chapter, so we're not going to read it, okay? But in Isaiah 50. 53, it's an incredible chapter. And if you ever have Jewish friends, um, read to them Isaiah 53. And you'll notice it'll be talking about Jesus. They might stop you along the way if you're reading it because they're going to think you're reading from the New Testament. But it's clearly Jesus in this Isaiah 53. Look into it, please. All right, Scorpio. Scorpio bullet points are the conflict, the serpents, the serpents' coils, the struggle with the enemy, the toiling vanisher of evil, and the message, the message would say, Satan bruising the Lord Jesus' heel, but Christ crushing Satan's head. And that's a familiar verse in Genesis 3.15, which is the first prophecy in the Bible. And it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. This is um, God talking to Satan as a serpent and between thy seed and her seed, and he shall bruise thy head, and you shall bruise his heel. All right. By the way, these pictures that I have to show you here, the picture that looks pretty plain up here, this is how you would actually see it in the skies. And I just want you to see that nothing looks like this. Okay. And I want to, to tell you that the best looking constellation of them all is actually Scorpio, because Scorpio actually can almost look like a scorpion because of the tail here. But when you look up there in the stars, nothing really reminds you of what it actually is. None of this is the best one, Scorpio. Um, Virgil doesn't look like a, like a virgin. It doesn't, it doesn't have anything special. Um, Sagittarius and all the other ones, they don't look like they're supposed to look like. So some of it, you know, they'll, they'll tell you in the planetariums that 
people see them and they see pictures. No, they don't look anything like that you think they would look like. All right, Sagittarius. The bullet points are the double-natured one triumphing. He gladdens the heavens. He builds fires of punishment. He casts down the dragon. And the message would be the final triumph. Portraits the Lord Jesus Christ as the exalted victor over death and Satan in Revelation 20.10. And the verse goes like this. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now this is Capricornus. All right, the bullet points are life out of death, the arrow of God, pierce and failing, springing up again in abundant life. All right, now the message would be shows Christ's judgment of sin, his death for our sins, and his resurrection. And that would be in Romans chapter 4, verse 25. And it says, who was, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Amen. All right, Aquarius. Bullet points are life water from on high, drinking in the heavenly food, Carrying the good news, bearing aloft the crossover and the earth. All right. Now that speaks of Christ sending the blessed Holy Spirit with all his benefits for all the people. And that's, that's kind of a lot of verses to read, but I encourage you to read on that one, please. All right, Pisces. Pisces bullet points are multiplication of the Redeemer's people uphold and covered by the Lamb, the intended bride bound and exposed, the bridegroom exalted, and the message would be shows the saved winning others to Christ. And that would be Matthew 4.19. It says, I'll make you fishermen of men. And Jesus coming for the resurrection. And 1 Corinthians 15 Basically, it talks the story of when well, we get resurrected um, in the rapture. And it starts talking about in a twinkle of an eye, he's going to change us. All right, Arius. Bullet points are the lamb found worthy. The bride releases and making ready. Uh, Satan bound. The breaker triumphing. Now, I just want to say that if... These are going too fast for you. You're encouraged to go back and just listen to those pieces again. I just, I'm trying not to make this a 30 minute video. And the break of triumphing, I think I said that. Now the message would, would say this. It would say glory out of humiliation, which obviously happened to Christ. Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain for our sins and victorious over Satan. Now in John chapter 1, verse 29, this is the verse. The next day John sees Jesus coming upon him and says, Behold the Lamb of God which take, takes away the sins of the world. Amen. All right, Taurus. The bullet points are the invincible ruler come. I should say cometh, right? The sublime vanisher, the river of judgment, the all-ruling shepherd, and the, um, the message would say Jesus' second coming and he comes, he's coming in judgment upon a sinful world and Satan. And that would be in Revelations chapter 6. Let me see if I can read one verse in there. It's, those are the verses where it talks about the sixth seal. It talks about great earthquakes and the sun will become like the moon as, as blood. And there's going to be a lot of stuff there. And I can't wait to get to Revelations and, and the coming of Christ. That's going to be awesome. All right, Gemini. Gemini bullet points are the marriage of the Lamb, the enemy threatened down, the prince coming in glory, the princely following, and the message says this, speaks of the duality um, as 100% God, Christ, of course, and 100% man, and as king and servant. And let me see, this is Philippians chapter 2. Let me see if I can read one or two verses. Hmm. Verse 6, who being in the form of God, 
thought it not robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. So one of those verses talks about him being God. The other one talks about him being man. Cancer, second last one. Bullet points are the possession secured. The lesser fold, there's two folds here. The lesser fold being the church of the firstborn, which is us Christians. But the greater fold is Israel. They were the first. Safe folding into an everlasting kingdom. And the message would be, assures his redeemed that he will bring them safely home to heaven. And John 10, 27 to 30, basically it says that I will lose, I will lose none of them. And basically, um, I'm going to protect them. Let me see. Here's one of the verses. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them everlasting life, eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Amen. And the last one is Leo. Bullet points are the king rending, the serpent fleeing, the bold of wrath upon him, the carcass devoured. Now the message would be prophetically assures us that the Lord Jesus is victorious over sin and death and Satan. Now in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15. And it says, For so much, then as the children are partake of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him, Satan of course, um, that had the power of death, that is the devil. I will only write one of the verses. One star that we all know about. 2,000 years ago, the wise men followed this star to find the child Jesus. The birth was a start, but the death of Christ was, was where he actually showed his true love. Now, of course, you got to repent and you got to make him Lord, okay? And then you'll be part of his kingdom too. Now, if you found this to be valuable and informative, you know, please subscribe, thumbs up, put a comment there. Let me know if this was helpful to you or, or you can pass it to a friend who's into horoscopes. I do want to say this. Christians should not be looking at horoscopes. You don't need to be looking at telling, letting them tell you how your life should be running. You should be listening to what the Bible says and follow that as your guide. This is the Bible Ranger, keeping the Bible simple and yet rich in content. Thank you.